And here we are. Another episode of you watching me cook myself dinner. Today is like no other day and no other episode that we've done in the past because I'm not cooking just one entree in size or whatever. Today we're doing no less than four because tonight is appetizer night. Yes, we're gonna have a meal comprised of nothing but appetizers or snacks or whatever you wanna call them. And to start things off, we know we always like to start with a drink. This is a glass of brandy. I'm gonna be setting this on fire later and making a giant flame over my stove, so I'm not gonna drink it, but I'll put this aside. I've been uh, really pleased with the Bloody Marys, so we're gonna do another Bloody Mary again today, starting with our glass of ice and our bottle of Sky Vodka. Now, this isn't my favorite vodka. In fact, it's probably not even top five. I don't even know if it could be top 10. I don't know how many vodkas there are that I would drink. I don't know. But anyway, it's what I got, so that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna put a healthy, healthy amount of vodka in here. Last time we did this, there wasn't enough vodka. That was a major problem. All right, so we got the vodka. As usual, I like to put way too much Worcester sauce in there, so uh, seven good swigs. I hope you're enjoying the music. It's different this time. It's not that folky kind of stuff. Instead, I got some funky kind of thing going on. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Yep, that seems about right. Looks like diarrhea, except like fully liquid. That's how you know it's gonna be a great Bloody Mary. All right, a little bit of Tabasco, just to kind of give it some kick. Yep, that seems about right. And of course, we can't forget the Bloody Mary mix, which I left in the fridge. No joke though, this is gonna be by far the most difficult episode that we've done so far, simply because of how many different ingredients, cooking stuff going on all at the same time. I only have one oven, I had to compromise when I was planning this out, how I'm gonna put multiple things in need different temperatures and times in the oven. It's not that hard, I guess. Uh, actually, I just did guess and hopefully it works out. We'll see how that goes. All right, glug, glug, glug of this thick tomato-y goodness. Boop. Okay, I'll leave this out just in case. We might need a refill. This is gonna be a long one. All right, so I got the oven preheating there to 400. Uh, we're, as usual, we're gonna do our mise en place uh, before we get to the actual cooking of stuff or assembly or whatever. Um, first thing I wanted to point out, one of the dishes we're doing today is charcuterie. Mm, fancy, yeah. In fact, I have this nice book on charcuterie and this book has all sorts of things like pictures of Charcuterie, that doesn't look like it. That looks more like a salad. In fact, it is a salad. These are salads, these are not charcuterie. I don't know, whatever. It's, it's uh, you know, sliced up meats and maybe cheeses on a, on a board. So uh, I'm uh, simple as far as that goes. I don't need a cookbook to tell me how to slice up meats and put them on a board. I do have something really cool though this nifty device that I got on Amazon, it's basically a cutting board, but it's got this cool little uh, thing here, like with a really thin wire, and you just put some cheese in there and sleep, sleep, sleep. Gives you nice, nice, easy slices of cheese. I won't be using it for the uh, sausage or salami cut up because that would just not work out so good. Okay, so here's what we're doing. Uh, we are doing, I got, I got all these recipes like written down because uh, just so much, so much going on. Mm -hmm. Oh man. We're doing five dishes tonight, five dishes, crazy. All right, we are doing chicken liver pate. Yeah, chicken livers are cheap. Here's a, here's 200 grams of chicken livers. It looks bloody and gross, and uh, this is gonna be great. It's usually better to prepare chicken liver pate a day in advance or a couple days in advance. It gets, uh, lets all the flavors kind of do their thing in the fridge and then you smear it on some kind of bread or whatever. I don't do the bread, I just eat the stuff straight and I am doing it straight up today. So it's uh, gonna be a little different because at the end of it all, when we're putting it together, uh, I've got this uh, clarified butter here, also known as ghee. And uh, you basically just kind of pour that all up on the top there and let it solidify in the fridge and then you get a little We'll slice of the uh, the ghee when it hardens in the fridge on top of the pate that you can spread on your bread. And it is phenomenal. Stole this recipe from Jamie Oliver, good British guy. Sorry, a lot of his restaurants went out of business. Okay, next up, we are doing stuffed jalapeno poppers wrapped in bacon. Oh yeah, these are real easy to do, like super easy. All you gotta do is get the filling, mush it together, wrap it in some bacon in the oven, comes out. It's great, simple, easy. 
Uh, this one is for Miss Vicky. Uh, Miss Vicky had posted a recipe for what I'm gonna call cheese crisps. Now in the keto world, it's a very common snack to make cheese crisps of various sorts, which is essentially just taking some sorts of shredded cheese, sticking them on a tray and sticking that in the oven until it gets crispy and then you pull it out and let it cool because otherwise it won't be crispy, it'll be kind of uh, soft, which is not what we want. So anyway, these are a little fancy because they have two cheeses, not just one cheese, but two cheeses and little bacon bits, which are delicious, plus some really finely sliced jalapeno. Mm. See how that goes. Plus we have our charcuterie. And then f also I'm gonna like make a single serve portion size of guacamole because guacamole is awesome and also extremely healthy if you think about it with all the ingredients that are in there. All right, so I barely know where to start other than I need to get some stuff out of the way for now um, so that we can start cutting things up. Actually, what I'm pretty sure I need to do, so much equipment, I need, I need like, uh, I need a tray with a rack for the jalapeno poppers. I need uh, one of these, these little silipats. If you don't have one of them, get them. You will use them for all sorts of things. Anyway, I got one of those. That's for the uh, cheese crisps. Need that, I got a couple of pans. One's pretty much to saute some chicken livers and other things. One is to cook bacon, which I need to do right now. So um, let's get let's get going with the bacon. Oh, it's just like not even enough room. Oh, and mounds and mounds of cheese. So much cheese. This is like saturated fat heaven tonight. That's what we're doing. We're making a bunch of melted saturated fat with salt and other things, and that's how it's delicious. We got more cheese here. This is another cheese. Just put that cheese over with the cheese, and then there's this whole big thing of cheese uh, that can hang out with the cheese. First thing we need to do is get the bacon cooking because this is probably going to take the longest and hold up the construction of our cheese crisps. All right, so for this, I just need a couple slices of bacon, uh, so just four. I'm going to use this whole package, but that's mostly to wrap the other bacon later. Uh, but for now, I just need four, so let's cut this bad boy open. Um, fun health note, uh, I try to eat only uncured bacon. Now, what does that mean? That means that they don't cure it. So uh, it doesn't really have the nitrites or nitrates in it, uh, they, other than those naturally occurring in celery salt. Okay, so that's just a thing to keep in mind. Because those things are like bad for your heart or something? I don't know. All right, so uh, here we go. Four slices of bacon. Uh, they're organic bacon or something like that. Uh, my oven's ready to go. I'm actually gonna cut these in half because they're gonna be cut up into little bits later. Little bits. So it doesn't really matter that they are in continuous pieces. Uh, I'm just gonna, gonna stick them in the pan. If you weren't aware of this, um, obviously the best way to cook bacon is in the oven, like they do in restaurants. That's how you should do it yourself, maybe. Um, if you are doing it in a pan, it's generally greatest if you start with the pan cold and the bacon uh, cold just kind of going in at the same same time here. Yeah, I don't know why that really makes a difference, but it keeps you from burning the stuff. We don't wanna burn it. Uh, the other thing you gotta make sure you're doing is uh, appropriately draining the great, the, uh, all the shit, and the fat, etc., off of the bacon. Nobody likes greasy bacon. I mean, some people probably like greasy bacon. My wife likes greasy bacon. She also likes it somewhat, let's call it a uh, medium rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of not my thing uh, for bacon. Maybe not medium rare, medium, more of a medium. All right, Let me turn this on without touching it. Just throw that over some medium heat. Make sure that fire's on and get this bacon stuff off my fingers. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I've already pre-washed the vegetables. There's actually a lot of veg work we're gonna have to do. All these jalapenos uh, need to not only be sliced open, uh, but we need to remove all of the stems and the veiny goodness from inside the jalapenos, or it's just not gonna work out. It's gonna, it's not gonna work out, okay? We'll just leave it at that, it's not, not gonna work out. All right, man, I'm talking too much. I forgot to put the olives in my Bloody Mary. See how distracted I am doing five, five freaking dishes? Yeah, we, we can have a bunch of olives. That's, that's good. Out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. Okay, so bacon is starting to heat up. I will need some tongs here in a minute. All right, and now that this is all contaminated bacon stuff, I will just leave this black one here. So I've got these little uh, on top of cutting board, cutting boards, these little plastic sheets that helps me keep from cross-contaminating stuff. All right, bacon's out of the way. 
white one hasn't been used yet. <sighs> oh man. Oh, it's got way more kick than the last. Hey, <laughs> hello. Wow. All right, bacon's coming. Uh, let's do some stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna mix some stuff in a uh, in a bowl. I got bowls. I got lots of bowls. I need a, a measure of thing. Where's a dry measure of thing? Here we go. That's a can opener. What size are you? Half a cup. All right. So in this bad boy, I am going to dump a full cup of Parmesan cheese. Now it said to use shredded cheese, and I'm not using shredded cheese. I'm using grated cheese. I don't think it'll matter because technically uh, it's all going to melt into a thing in the oven anyway. So if anything, maybe this gives me more of a solid texture at the end of the day. I don't know. I have a feeling this whole container is one cup. I have a very strong feeling about that. Uh, well, close. Uh, yeah, that's a cup. Okay, glad I measured. Totally useful. Okay, I got, I got a bunch of that. And then I need a half cup of the shredded cheddar, preferably aged. Okay, well, I didn't want to buy shredded cheddar for this. Uh, so I just have this Mexican style blend and that's gonna be good enough. So it's Parmesan Mexican style blend cheese. Seems legit. What do we need, half cup? That's a whole one of these. Okay, that's cool. Maybe a little more just, you know, because I know you can't really see this very well, and that's kind of a function of Facebook making this video an odd shape, I guess, because they do that. Okay, we got that, and uh, let's get one of the jalapenos in here. Now I got a bunch of jalapenos and other stuff. I got jalapenos, I got serranos. I want to use a little one for this because I want to keep my big fat ones to stuff later. Yeah, that's what, that sounds like a thing. I, sounds dirty. It's Okay, uh, da, da, da. so really here, is that a knife? Hmm, you hear that bacon? I can hear that bacon. I'm not gonna turn that over yet. Uh, now this jalapeno, I'm not actually going to, um, you know, cut all the stuff out of. We're gonna leave that on there because these things are gonna have a little kick. That's, that's definitely gonna happen. But I'm gonna do it super thin. Super, super thin. By the way, uh, if you ever are cutting things like jalapenos and you're not wearing gloves like me, be sure to wash your hands very thoroughly, especially before touching your own genitals when urinating. Okay, moving on. Uh, in this dish today, we, uh, or these dishes, I should say, we have not only jalapenos, but also our friend Serrano Pepper will be joining us later. Serrano is a... Uh, a good friend of mine. Very useful. It's like the uh, the all the flavor with a, maybe a little less heat. All right, some of these are not so thin. You know what? I don't care. I, I really don't give a shit. I'm eating snacks for dinner, so like, how picky can I really be? All right. All right. So I got this cheese. Uh, it's uh, let me just mix it all up here. All right. So. I was totally not supposed to do that. I was supposed to put the uh, Parmesan on the thing and then put a little bit of the uh, shredded cheese on top of that prior to sticking the oven. Kind of fucked that up, but that's all right. We're gonna do something a little different and it's maybe gonna work even better or the same or I don't know, doesn't matter. All right, so here's what we got. We need the Silly Pat because otherwise the stuff, the cheese is gonna stick. If you lay down like aluminum foil or something it's gonna stick it's gonna suck and you don't want that uh, before I get into that though let's give this bacon a little flippery do one year for Christmas my mom got me a bacon press I have it and I use it all the time but in this case I don't care if my bacon gets all wrinkly because I'm gonna be crumbling it anyway so that does not matter today but if you want flat bacon a bacon press is a great way to get that. Okay, uh, I don't know what we're doing here. I guess we'll just make like little, little mounds. They're kind of like cookies. Mm -hmm. It's like a good, a good solid pinch. They're gonna get kind of wide. I mean, you know, the taller they are, of course, the wider they're gonna get. Cheese things. 
looks like I'm going to be able to do. You know what? I have I have a pretty strong feeling that this entire tray is just going to come out as one big cookie looking thing of cheese. It's going to be a big solid tray of cheese. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I hope you're okay with that. You know what? I've got excess cheese. That, that might be a problem. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Fun fact, I also have a bag of Parmesan crisps uh, up over there, you know, for snacking. You know, I could probably do a couple batches. Yeah, maybe we'll do a couple batches since I have some excess cheese. I'll just put that aside for now. Okay, all clean. Great. How's that bacon coming? Not ready yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I gotta put these little jalapenos on there. These things are gonna have a little bit of bite. Tell you what, tons of uh, seeds and all that. I left the seeds in, man. If this thing doesn't burn on the way in, it is definitely gonna burn on the way out. Tell you what, not to be too grotesque, you know, but uh, let's be honest here. These are, these are, some of these are a little thick too. Maybe a little too thick. I don't know. All right, that's kind of prepped and ready to go. Woo, into the trash. Okay. Well, that's doing what that's doing, uh, and we're waiting for that bacon. That's the only ingredient remaining here. Once the bacon's ready, we're gonna dry it off, crumble it up, stick it on these cheese things, and they go into the oven. All right, we gotta do some other prep work. Some other prep work. Okay, so what that really means is, let's make the filling for our jalapeno poppers. Okay, that's a different, uh, different sheet here. You ever wonder why news anchors on the television who are exclusively reading teleprompter material have pieces of paper in their hand? I often wonder that. I have no idea. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Okay, so what do we need here? We need uh, basically half a block of cream cheese. Like the graduations here. One, two, three, four ounces. Okay, that's exactly half a block like this half is the half that wants to come out. All right, cream cheese in. This is a simple recipe too. It's uh, cream cheese plus other than cream cheese. And then, uh, I don't know, pepper, salt, a little garlic. That's it, you stick it inside of jalapenos, call it a day. Boom, done, easy. Oh, I get this bacon rotation time. Now I'm gonna cook this bacon Kind of well done-ish because I want it to crumble really well. Um, before I put it on my cheese things there. Okay, let that continue to do what it does. All right, this one needs uh, pepper jack, pepper jack cheese. Wait, wait, three fourths of a cup. Okay. It's, it's very important to be extremely accurate, I roll, um, about measuring this stuff out. So, uh, eh, that's probably half a cup. Nah, a little bit more. Eh, that's probably three fourths of a cup. A little extra more, because you know, we like stuffing. And then one clove of garlic mince. I actually need a lot of garlic uh, for all of the things we're doing today, especially the pate. The pate. The uh, pate. If you're not familiar with what pate is, uh, this is a pretty simple recipe also. It's a bunch of chicken livers uh, that we're gonna kind of cook up and uh, with some shallots and garlic, it's gonna be very fancy. And that we're gonna basically mix it one-to-one -one with butter. So that's what you eat when you eat pate. It's uh, half butter and half chicken livers. So, you know, all the healthy bits. Mm -hmm. mm. Something has clogged my straw. There we go. Plus some sage and some herbs to make it, you know, herbal. Uh, all right, here we go. Get, get this garlic clove coming out. Don't want to burn my bacon, that would be bad. But I definitely want it crispy. Actually, I gotta move this somewhere. Uh, I need a bigger kitchen. Let's put that there for now. All right, so it says to finely mince. Okay, we can do that. I've got a knife and some basic knife skills. Just kind of chop that up. 
How's that bacon? Ready for a flip. Yep. You know, there's probably some controversy about uh, how long to cook bacon on each side, how many times you should flip it, etc. I don't know the answer because I almost never cook it in a pan because uh, it's just so much easier to cook a ton of bacon in the oven. And that's about, it's getting close to being ready. So I'm going to get a, uh, a plate ready and make a bunch of noise doing that. I'm going to lay down some paper towels to catch all this grease that's going to be coming off of these things. They're going to be greasy. Mm. Some of it smells done already. Uh, it's a little bit more. It needs a little bit more. All right, back to this garlic I was mincing finely. Finely minced garlic. You know, garlic's probably my favorite, uh, what would you call it? Is it a vegetable? I mean, yeah, I mean, technically it's a vegetable, but but you don't eat garlic like you do other vegetables, right? Like I would never make a salad and like, you know, maybe toss some garlic in there. I would never do that. That just sounds gross. What, what do you call it then? Gosh, I don't know. It's uh, an odor thing. There's a, there's a name for odor things. I, I can't remember what it is. Ugh. All right, that, that garlic's in there. How's this bacon looking? Yeah, my cat just came in here because she smells the bacon. Cat likes bacon. Yeah, you do, huh? Smell it? She also likes the smell of microwave popcorn. Yeah. She won't eat it though. Kind of, kind of weird. All right, like this one's done. This one, done. This one is done. This one is done. Most of these are done, not all of them. Uh, done. I'm gonna give this a second to cool before I uh, go ahead and pat it down. That's not done. That's also not quite done. All right, those two little bits there. Little bits need a little bit more time. Uh, all right, let me get a, I don't know, fork. It's a utensil. Let's mash up this, uh, mash and mix this cheese here. Mmm, cream cheese and pepper jack cheese with some garlic in it. It's just totally stuck sticking to itself, sticking everywhere. So much sticking, maybe tired of sticking. This actually doesn't need to be uh, really homogenized. Yeah, that's a good word. Oh, this bacon's kind of smelling like it's getting done. Yeah, okay, you're done. You're done, get her done, get her done, done there. All right, that's done. All right, bacon's done. We no longer need bacon. Dump the bacon grease into a glass container here. Oh yeah. Kind of quickly clean this up because I'm going to reuse this pan. Actually, no, I'm not. Keep that pan there. All right, so that's doing its thing. We'll cook the liver in here. All right, so bacon, I'm just going to let that kind of dry for a minute um, while I continue to mix this cheese up. Probably gonna have to use my fingers, which is uh, not what I really want to do right now. It's kind of messy. All right. Well, I got cream cheese mixed in with our pepper jack and garlic bits uh, in here, poorly mixed. Can't really see much, but I'll do that better with my hands in a minute. Let's get this out of here. Don't need this right now. Yep. Let's knock over that Tabasco. Actually, I do need that right now. Time to dry off this bacon. Mm, I love the smell of bacon. Most people do. Vegans probably do not. Or maybe they do. They just choose not to eat it because of, uh, you know, whatever reason it is that they are vegan. Okay. Great. Nice and dry. Grease-free bacon. It's the best kind. Okay, we got the grease out of here. And uh, my process of degreasing it <laughs> has broken a lot of it, which is great. In fact, I'm going to go in here with my hands. Just kind of crumble this stuff up, break it into little bits, rip it up, shred it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and continue to mash it with the paper towel. Okay, so our cheese things are ready-ish. Now I'm going to apply some bacon to them. Wow, this is still hot and burning my fingers, which is great. It's good for uh, good for stuff. Okay, crumbled up bacon crumbles pieces. 
Here we go. Little little crumbles of bacon onto our jalapeno cheese things. I'm probably putting way too much on each one, and I'm going to run out by the time I get to the end. I can foresee that coming. I see it, and that's okay. It's okay. Some of them can be bacon-free for my uh, Jewish friends who could otherwise eat this. This is kosher, right? It's just uh, cheese and a vegetable. You're not mixing and matching animal and animal parts, except for the ones with the bacon. Obviously, that is not kosher. You know? It's okay. Most people in the world are not kosher. Most people in the world are Chinese. Yeah, think about that. Next time somebody says, most people, yeah, really? Really? Most what people? What demographic? Distribute this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. It's uh, cheese, another cheese, jalapeno, and a bacon. And we're gonna stick that in the oven for a period of time. Uh, I don't know how much period of time. I gotta get to that right, correct sheet of paper. Uh, less than 12 minutes, because we're doing it a, holler, a higher temperature. Oh, also, Per the recipe, I need to apply freshly cracked pepper. So let's do that. There we go. I'll just, you know, get that all over the place. It doesn't matter. Some of it will get in there, some of it won't. Again, I'm expecting this to just kind of melt and flatten out and turn into a big sheet of cheese with little jalapeno bits and bacon all over it. Also, if I really cared about presentation, which I don't, uh, but if I did, it might have been a better idea to take the bacon and like, you know, kind of mince it up into little tinier, uh, tinier pieces or maybe even care to make them homogeneously shaped or sized. But we're not cooking them, so it doesn't matter. They're already cooked. All right, and I'm putting this kind of off to the side because I'm gonna need to use the other half of the thing for the poppers in a minute. Okay, that's in there. Let me actually set a little timer. I think it's gonna be about 10 minutes. Hard to tell. Really all we're doing is melting the cheese. You know, that's it. Nothing really else to it. Okay, where were we? All right, so we got this thing uh, kind of mixed up. That's ready for jalapenos. We should prep the jalapenos before we stick the jalapenos in the thing to cook the jalapenos. Go figure. Okay, so I'm doing a half dozen jalapenos. So I have a half dozen of them. That's six if you... Uh, know that. Now this is going to be a little bit different than that previous jalapeno in that I'm actually going to be stripping out all of the uh, seeds and the whatnot. I want to pepper gas myself. Okay. So simple enough. We cut the top off each one. Mm -hmm. These things are amazing by the way. Like totally absolutely amazing. Um, especially because in this particular recipe, the bacon to jalapeno cheese mixture ratio is really ideal. Uh, you'll see in a moment once we get to that point. Okay, we've cut the tops off and now I'm just going to fillet the jalapenos. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can fillet fish, you can fillet jalapenos, you can fillet a chicken breast. In fact, uh, not a bad thing to do if you have a really, really big chicken breast. Now, if I wanted to be more of a barbecue purist, which I don't, then I might have maybe left the lids on these jalapenos, cut them in half, and then scooped all the stuff out. But we're not barbecuing them. There used to be a place over in Hillcrest called Brazen Barbecue. They're out of business now. Mm. Unfortunately, but they had these these uh, stuffed jalapenos, bacon wrap, and they'd stick them in the uh, smoker. And my God, those were those things were so good. I mean, holy shit! It, it was smoked jalapenos with the smoked bacon and the smoked cheese, whatever the whatever the hell they stuck inside the things. Holy crap! I, I, I mean, oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah. Anyway, so we want to cut all the stuff out and not look at it if you can help it because, you know, it's like tear gassing yourself, basically. A little bit of the jism kind of shoots up into your face. Uh, you don't want that. <laughs> not in this case, at least. It really hurts. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to 
Gotta get all the seeds, you gotta get all the pith. All that white, uh, white shit that's stuck to the sides. Gotta get rid of all of it. All of it, all of it, all of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, that almost hit my eyeball. Wow. I felt it, like, right in the side of my face, next to my eye. That could have been a really bad situation. Really bad. Looking the other way. Yeah. Man. It's not that we don't want them to be hot, because, I mean, that's kind of the point of a pepper, right? It's to give it some heat. But uh, jalapenos, we, we want to be able to eat a bunch of these, right? And if you make it too hot, you can only eat like two, and then you can't eat shit. It sucks. By the way, our cheese has been in the oven for almost four minutes. Yeah. Let's scrape all that crap out of there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is gonna be the star of the show, by the way. Like, I know the cheese chips are cool and novel and um, sound really good, but when I put things in my mouth, this is this is gonna be the winner here, these jalapeno poppers. Mostly because of the extreme amount of cheese with a little bit of vegetable and then a ton of bacon. Like a ton of bacon. Okay, okay, these are almost done. Oh yeah, get all that out of the way. Get out the way. All right, now I gotta clean my cutting board off somehow. Getting all of this shit out of the way. The juice is fine. You can leave that jalapeno juice on your cutting board and stuff. NBD, if you will, as they say in the text messaging languages. No seeds though. Definitely gotta get rid of the seeds. And I'm just gonna like wipe this onto the floor and sweep later. Okay. So uh, our jalapenos are ready to go, uh, ready to get stuffed. And actually, I need more, where did my bacon go? I gotta need that bacon back. All right, this is where we're gonna use our separate cutting board thing because I gotta take uh, six slices of bacon. I think it's most of the rest of this. One, two, three, four, five, all but one slice. Oh, come on. For this whole meal, I have to refrigerate and save one slice of bacon. What a crock of shit. Oh, okay, I'll take care of that later. All right, cutting all of this in half because every single jalapeno is gonna get one half of one slice of bacon, right? We're making a dozen of these things and we need the bacon. Oh, that's too much water. Let's give that a rinse real quick. Okay, all right, now for the fun part figuring out how to wrap these things and get a dozen of them onto this tray. It's gonna be fun-ish. Okay, so here we go. First things first, let's get into this. This here, mix here, a cheese here. That's the thing. Uh, things first, yeah. Mm -hmm. We might need to do a refill. Just throwing that out there. Okay. I'm actually gonna kind of knead this like dough with my hands kind of mix it up a lot better than I did with the fork, which did a bad job, by the way, like a real shit job. Okay. Now these things, so what we do is we take a little nugget of uh, cheese goo, we stick it into the jalapeno and shape it, and look at that, it fits nicely. Ooh, fancy, except not fancy. Okay, and then we're gonna wrap it with some bacon, and we can stretch that bacon out a little bit to get it all the way around. And then we get a little thing that looks like this. It's like a little baby. Hello, I'm a little baby all wrapped up in a bacon. Okay, great, and onto the tray. Wash, rinse, and repeat without the washing or the rinsing. Really, it's just the repeating. That's what we're gonna do. Make another one of those. You know what I discovered the other day? Uh, on Reddit at about this time is live cooking. I was almost considering moving my show to Reddit for that purpose, much bigger. Um, not that I'm trying to get an audience because like it doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this fun. But um, there's this one girl, she bakes. Actually, she does savory foods too, but um, she doesn't wear a bra. You can see her nipples the whole time. She always wears like really thin shirts to kind of showcase that. And she always is like one of the trending, uh, most popularly currently being viewed uh, I don't know, cooking hosts, if you will. 
And it's like, man, really, why? Because like the food she cooks is awesome. That's that's probably not it. That's that's almost definitely not it. Actually, it's uh, it's her boobs. Isn't that weird that like uh, lots of straight men are into boobs? Like why? I mean, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that or, at all, you know, whatever. But, um, but why boobs? It's, it's like, are other cows into cows that have bigger udders or uh, better, better shape, more shapely udders? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Like this concept of sexualization of breasts, um, but on the other hand, they're for feeding babies. Like that's that's what they do. Uh, you know, it's like public breastfeeding. Yeah, free the nipple, you know. Um, that's totally fine. Uh, and it's not a sexual thing. And if you want to do that in the store, okay, your baby's hungry and your baby needs to eat. That's, uh, that's a thing, you know. It's okay. Um, and I think it's, it's some people who are unable to separate the... Uh, practical application of breasts from the um, other applications of breasts, if you will. Man, I'm probably gonna get myself into a trouble. Uh, I just, I keep going down this route here. I shouldn't drink so much. Okay, some of these are bigger than others. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, so we're almost halfway done. And actually we're almost, oh, I hate touching this like that, but our cheese things are done. I need to rinse my hands. This is, uh, this is important. Very important. Very, very important, actually, because uh, I don't want to burn them. And I don't think I'm going to need this today, so I'll just get that out of the way. All right, here comes the fun part. I can't use that. Out of the way, out of the way. When you pull things out of the oven, use a glove. You'll burn yourself. Probably. If your oven's working well. Okay, here we go. Oh man, that smells like Parmesan. Okay, so I'm just gonna show this to you real quick, which you can't see too well because, you know, camera and stuff, but you see that? Those are little cheese crisps. If I ate them now, it would be horrible because, uh, actually this is burning my hand, really fucking hot. Okay, gotta put that down. Um, that needs to sit for a bit. Right now it would be soft and we want it to be crisps. So that's, that's a thing. Wow, that's, it smells, if you could smell this, it smells very Parmesan, very Parmesan. Ooh, mm. I might need a refill. Let's get these jalapenos going because they're gonna need a little time. What I, the other issue about cutting the tops off the jalapenos is that when they're cooking, if the cheese melts, it could jizz them all into your pan. And you don't really want that too much. Um, it's not great when that happens, to be honest. Okay, this bacon is just disintegrating. It's disintegrating, it's not, not very proper. Not proper bacon. It's funny to me how different parts of the world have different types of bacon. Oh, this is American bacon, it's streaky bacon. You know what, it's all pork belly. That's what it is, it comes from the pork's belly. Like you're eating their gut. And since pigs are a lot like humans, it's kind of like, eating your your um, your obese uncle's gut you know or um, you know that uh, well actually we eat the pigs kind of young right so they're kind of like obese teenagers really and we just choose to eat their guts like the their beer guts except they don't eat beer they eat other things some of them eat uh, a diet almost exclusively on things that they forage from the forest specifically Okay, we have a bit of an underrun on the cheese here. Um, acorns. You ever had that Iberico ham? Yeah, that's acorns. They eat acorns, and it makes their, their meat taste different. Isn't that kind of a weird concept to think about? Like, hey, I'm gonna feed this animal something so that when I eat the animal, this guy gets double bacon, because, you know, we got extra bacon here. Um, anyway, I want, this, I want this animal to taste a certain way, so I'm gonna feed it acorns. Weird, who would have thought about acorns? That's just so strange. I mean, delicious, but strange. Okay, so um, I have an extra jal couple jalapenos. I have run out of cheese. It's unfortunate. I will have to cook that bacon and uh, probably do a saute. Maybe put that in some eggs. We'll call that breakfast. 
Except I don't eat breakfast. Fun fact, I only eat one meal a day. And this is it, you're watching it. You're gonna watch it go down. Okay, these things need a little bit of time. All right, so I no longer need the recipe for that. Right, so that's good to go. Whoosh, swish. Okay, poppers, here we go. These things take a while. Take a while. Let's try it out. Get them in there. The reason they take a while? Because the bacon has to cook. That's the only reason. And we can get rid of this uh, contaminated board here. Out of the way. Fantastic. Okay. Now we can go into making the pate. Great. Pate is pretty straightforward, uh, pretty simple actually. Most of the, the prep work here is just kind of going to be cutting up this shallot. Get that out of the way. And um, I'm going to saute the shallot. In fact, let me get the, the heat going here. All right, so here's the plan. Uh, I've made this a bunch of times. Uh, it's really good, like super good, super good. Okay, so I'm gonna take this shallot and uh, this clove of garlic here. I'm gonna mince them both up into little bits, little bits. I say that a lot, I don't the reference, leave it in the comments. Okay, um, we're gonna mince these things up. I don't want that little nub of shit there. Okay, uh, and Saute them in a little bit of oil, a little bit of olive oil. And uh, once that happens, I'm gonna stick them in the food processor, or as they say in Canada and other places, the food processor. And uh, once that's, that's going, or that's out, I'm gonna clean out that pan real quick, give it a quick rinse, a little once over with a paper towel. Then we're gonna throw our chicken hearts in there with some butter. And did I say hearts? I meant livers. I said that at the store today, too. I'm like, hey, where are your chicken hearts? And what I really meant was, like, hey, where are your chicken livers? And the uh, at Vons are like, yeah, come back tomorrow because, like, we don't have a lot in stock right now. And I'm like, yeah, that ain't, that ain't gonna work for me. But then I went to this place called Iowa Meat Farms where I can get my USDA prime beef, also the dry prime aged beef, prime aged beef, dry aged prime beef, and the American Wagyu beef all at $10 per pound price point differences. Exactly $10, which is obviously planned and arbitrary. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, you do this uh, in the thing and then uh, we'll throw in the chicken livers later. We don't wanna cook them too much because they get grainy. It's like eating sand except liver E. Uh, so we don't want that. Um, and then we basically mix it all together with some butter in the food processor. That's it, there's nothing else to it. Okay, so these cheese, uh, Parmesan cheese chip things, they're looking pretty good. Like it, it's snack time. It, it very much seems like a snack time here. Uh, let me see how this is going. Okay, so that's warmed up a bit. Oh, and we're gonna set shit on fire here. So uh, be ready for that. Big flame, a little bit of oil. that up just to kind of get a little bit of a color on this minced delicious here uh, I need these sage leaves I'm gonna start plucking them off while I wait for that oil to heat up uh, the recipe calls for a couple sprigs so I have a couple sprigs I'm actually making a half sized recipe uh, because uh, my wife is off for the weekend with her friends so I have all weekend to myself. Oh, quick plug, by the way, if you're interested, tonight I am going to be watching a movie called Pee Wee's Big Adventure. When was the last time you watched Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Did you know that movie came out in 1985? Huh? I know, right? Way ahead of its time. Revolutionary. Uh, and I still haven't visited all of the famous -y places uh, from that movie, like the big dinosaurs and stuff. That's a real place. You can go there. I think it's in Arizona. I don't actually know, and I'm making that up. But it very well could be in Arizona. Anyway, these sage leaves, I'm going to stick them in the food processor. Because they're they're ready to go already. Okay. Um, and it looks like my pan and oil are appropriately heated, so in we go with this stuff. Ah. 
sizzlicious, if you will. Okay. Move it around a little bit. Now I'm not gonna let this kind of sit here for too long. It's not really what we're into. Just gonna move it around. Oh man, smell, it's everywhere. The smell, that's uh, The Matrix. The first Matrix, check that movie out, good one. Don't feel like it tonight though. Tonight it's definitely Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Did you know Danny Elfman did the soundtrack for Pee Wee's Big Adventure? and for Big Top Pee Wee. When was the last time you saw Big Top Pee Wee? I can't even remember the last time I saw Big Top Pee Wee. It's been that long. I don't remember anything about that movie at all, to be honest, other than Pee Wee's in it. And Danny Elfman did the soundtrack, and uh, I kind of know how the soundtrack goes, because I'm, let's be honest, a little more into Danny Elfman than Pee Wee Herman. Okay. Well, that's doing what that does there. Almost ready. TBH. Uh, what else do we need to do? The chicken livers are here being liver E. That's there. The butter's there. Ah, yeah, nothing to do there. Okay, so the only other thing really to prep would be uh, some charcuterie. So let's make some charcuterie. No, well, actually, this is about a little, almost done. But we can start with some charcuterie. All right, so for charcuterie, Got this nifty little bamboo cutting board that I'm going to use as a serving platter because I'm fancy. And then, as I was uh, demonstrating earlier, I've got my cheese guillotine for all of my cheese guillotining needs. Okay, this garlic is starting to brown, therefore, this garlic is done. So, I'm actually going to uh, take it off and put it into. We don't actually want it like overcooked, really. Just do this here. Okay, garlic's in. All right, now I'm gonna give this, uh, nah, we'll just leave it. Technically the recipe says that I am supposed to wipe down the pan, but I'm not going to. All right, so I need a little butter. Let's call it a tablespoon. I'm gonna throw that in there. Ooh, this butter is soft, nice. All right. Uh, we're going to use a ton of butter in this recipe, like I mentioned a whole bunch of times. All right, I'm going to kick the heat up to like a medium high-ish. And uh, let that butter melt. Let me make sure I'm not doing anything wrong, because I can't remember. Okay, uh, blah, 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 butter's in there. Oh, actually, I wanted the sage in that thing. So let's pull some of that out. My bad. You know you should read instructions. Read and follow instructions when cooking. This is the thing that irks me the most about many people who bake is they don't measure shit. Baking is literally chemistry. And if you don't measure things, then you can't do the chemistry right. All right, so I got a little bit of butter in here, only about a tablespoon. And uh, well, I'm gonna stick my, stick my chicken in there, right? Blah, 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 honey, the butter remaining. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, throw in the livers. Here we go, here's my livers. And the sage, all right. Boom, livers and sage are in the thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cook the livers two, three minutes on each side. All right, we're gonna use our tongs, kinda mix this up a bit. Remember what I said, we don't wanna overcook these because then they get kinda grainy. And that's bad, it's really bad. So I'm gonna almost like Chinese walk these things a bit, kind of keep them moving, you know? Mm. Turn this grayish color. Here's a fun fact for you. If you're ever stranded in the wilderness and the only thing for you to eat is rabbits, if you only eat the rabbit meat, you will die from protein poisoning. The more you know, right? When you eat a rabbit and you're out in the wilderness and that's kind of all there is to eat, you really need to gut the fucker and eat everything. You gotta eat the liver, you gotta eat the kidneys, you gotta eat its heart, everything. Um, I think technically you're supposed to eat its uh, like intestinal tract and stuff too, I don't know. Wow, this sage smells good. It's not often that I cook with sage. 
Like, never. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna voice opinion about burning sage being a thing, because uh, I don't want to piss people off who happen to be, let's call it a, let's say, spiritual. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute or two while I drink alcohol. Mm-hmm. Shit, we're out of alcohol. I can make another one. I know how to do that. All right, more ice. More vodka. I got a fun vodka story I'm gonna tell you in a minute. Let me just kind of get this going here first. Whoop, burp, 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 burp. Okay. That's vodka. And we're sauce. Th th yeah, I used the whole bottle. Lucky for me, I always keep a spare. I gotta flip this stuff over though. Kinda keep it moving. Oh, it looks good. I mean, it looks like chicken livers. I'm surprised my cat's not going ape shit right now about chicken livers, because isn't that like the thing? Like cats like the chicken livers? No. Microwave popcorn. That's what she likes. The smell of it, at least. She doesn't like the taste. She won't eat it. I tried. I won't touch it. Nice. Okay. We got the Worcestershire sauce. Mr. Tabasco at. Ding! Oh, what are you doing? That's the cat. I'm saying hello to her. You smell the chicken livers? Do you like the chicken livers? Now, um, I don't know how I feel about this. The recipe specifically says, specifically says, to cook these chicken livers to a, um, Basically a medium rare. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I know how I feel about this Bloody Mary, though. I feel good about that. I feel really good. Oh, and this time... Actually, the olives are still in there from last time. Get that little stir. Got some on my feet. Got some on the ground. It's okay. Okay. These chicken livers and sage are about done. I know they're going to go in here. And I also know I need to add about full oh, four tablespoons. One, two, three, four. Four tablespoons of butter needs to go in there. Just kind of put that in there. Okay. Okay. I didn't come up with this. It is what it is. Kind of mix that around a bit. Mm -hmm. Pick up some of that butter sage smell and sauce. I'm going to cut one of these open and just kind of see what it looks like. Yep, they're done. It's pink in the middle. Okay. Now, all this into the food processor, including all the little sage leaves and all the little bits of butter and stuff. Mm -hmm. Scrape, scrape, scrape. What a wonderful sound. Okay. That concludes our heat for the evening. Check those jalapenos. Ooh, I can hear them. They're not ready. Not even close. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Okay. And my food processor is fucked up. So, you know, whatever. Here we go, let's make a puree. Woo! There we go! Yep. That might be it. Oh, I forgot the brandy. God damn it. All right, this is done. I forgot to do the brandy. Fucking. That really bums me out. I was really excited about the brandy. Like, really excited about the brandy. Uh, but my pate is done. It is now pate. I can't unpate it. Oh, God, I'm so pissed I did that. Or really didn't do that. It's 
French. It's French food. It's supposed to have it's supposed to have brandy, and then you set it on fire. All right, here's what we'll do. I'll throw the brandy in there. That's what we'll do. Uh, just to get the fond off of the pan, and while that's there, I'll set it on fire. Woo! Yay, fire! Okay. I mean, there's no, I'm not heating it or cooking it per se, but there's fond. I'm gonna scrape the fond off and get it in there too. That's what we're gonna do. Actually, I do wanna heat it because I wanna evaporate all the liquids. So we'll do that. We'll do that. We're basically gonna make a reduction, a fond sauce reduction thing. Wow, look at all this fire. It's still going. Whoa! Woo! Fire! Very exciting. Especially when you drink. Mm hmm. Yeah! Aww. Let me scrape all these fond bits off of the pan. It's literally called fond. I didn't make that up. I'm not fond of it or something stupid like that. It is literally a thing. All right, all the alcohol is gone. All we're left with is water and flavor. And I've got some, oh, that looks good. All right, take it back. We're gonna let that do its thing for a second. Uh, this recipe is kind of done. Um, we're just waiting on the poppers. That's done. Guacamole. Uh, actually, we were in the charcuterie. I'm getting so distracted. All right, charcuterie. Let's just let's just bang out the charcuterie real quick. Don't need that. There we go. What I got here is Italian, and yeah, people like it when I say I Italian. I know it's Italian or whatever. Um, salami. It's an Italian dry. Probably the most basic of salamis. And I'm just going to wipe my knife off, get all that butter off of there first. All right, that's good enough to get the uh, juices. Oh yeah. Let's get some flavor. It's always good to add flavor. I was probably supposed to season with a little S&P also, so I will probably follow up with, it smells like sugary from that brandy. Okay, anyway, knife and salami. Let's cut some slices here. Mm-hmm. Slicey, slicey, slicey. Now, um, being on a low carbohydrate diet, a, a delicious full meal is uh, just some salami, some cheese, and maybe a salad. That's all you need. And if you want a, a great uh, dessert to go with that, I recommend sugar-free black cherry jello. Mm, one of my favorites. I got a couple boxes of it, and I just haven't had a chance to make it yet. But it is very good. And that's, let's be honest, that's the best flavor of jello, black cherry. Okay, so look at this. I've got some slices of uh, meats here. Yay. Let me organize it so it looks fancy. If I was actually fancy, we'd have like pickled stuff. I don't have any of that today. Okay, done with the... Man, that burnt brandy smell is just so good. So good. I don't really like brandy, but um, the smell of it after you burn it and set it on fire in your own kitchen is, is really quite nice. Okay, here we go. Uh, first cheese up is going to be a sharp cheddar. Um, let me just kind of cut the end off here with the guillotine. Whoosh. Okay, and cut a slice, and another slice, and another slice, and another slice, and one more slice. Five slices of a sharp cheddar. This is a cow's milk. <clears throat> yeah, I'm saying that to be kind of, you know, somewhat funny. I think it's funny. Okay, done with that one. This one also is not exciting. This one they call mozzarella. I'm sure there's a better way to say mozzarella, like mozzarella, mozza, mozza. I don't know. I don't speak Italian. I don't. That is a fact. This stuff's really good on salads, by the way. I put it on salads all the time. Uh, these are the double wide slices. So we're only gonna have three of those and then uh, kind of give them all a cut in half here. Whoop. Look at that, we make little, little little slices of cheese with our cheese guillotine, it's great. Okay, we've got some mozz there. And the mozz goes back in the bag. And then finally I picked up today something special for tonight. We like the special thing. Here we go. 
I've had this before and I know it's good. This is a uh, smoked black pepper white cheddar. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Delicious. <laughs> There's another movie reference. Name it. It's an old lady. She goes, delicious. <laughs> kind of like that. Are we having duck for dinner? Delicious. <laughs> yep. That's how British old ladies talk. All right. We got five slices of this. This one's really nice. Oh, I should probably cut that in half too. There we go. We made a whole appetizer and it only took a minute. That needs to go in a bag, which I will put it in later. Let's check our jalapenos. Not ready yet. Oh God, looking good. That cheese is just like, <laughs> great. Okay, we're done with the cheese guillotine. Put that away. Here's our charcuterie. Looks kind of fancy-ish. What do you think? Oh, oh, look at all the variety of cheeses and the meat is very good. Hey, if you like blood sausage, good for you. I fucking hate that shit. Okay, moving on. This is a done dish. Done dish. The only dish I have left to cook are gonna be the jalapenos that are coming out. Um, here's our this, this is done. I need a spatula that is made of silicon. Here we go. This is fun. This little spatula here, let me pull it up to the camera so you can get a good look. Look at that, it's got all these cute little cat things on it. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I bet it's all backwards, so the meow is backwards because Facebook reverses the video for who fucking knows what reason. Okay, cool. All right, so I need the spatula to get all of the pattern out of this thing. Food processor. Okay, so normally, in most circumstances, after removing the panettone from the food processor. Throw that in the sink, because that's tough. It smells really good too, by the way. Um, we're just gonna like make it into a somewhat level sort of thing. Kind of smooth it out, kind of like concrete, you know? Like when the, the people lay down the concrete and they have the the wood floaty thing and the whatnot to kind of make a, a flat thing. There's a name for that. The cat's really excited about it. Are you really, you want a little bit of this pate? I, I'm gonna give some to the cat. I don't know if cats are supposed to eat pate, but it's just cooked chicken liver. I'm gonna give her a little bit. She plowed through, let's see if she likes it. She plowed through her food tonight. So uh, maybe she's just hungry. Let's see if she likes it. Come on. Ah, uh, she smelled it and not interested. Maybe she'll come back later. I'm gonna check back later. She has a bit of a habit of like warming up to foods. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so anyway, I got the pate in a container and what I'm gonna do now is take this liquid clarified butter and just kind of pour it on top. all there is to it. Voila, you've made pate and it's super fancy. Um, now I'm gonna eat this in a little bit. I'll show you what it looks like, but for now, just to kind of get it solidified a little bit, I'm gonna throw a lid on, put a little lid on this, and then I'm gonna throw it into a refrigeration unit to kind of chill it out and maybe, maybe it'll set up. I don't think it will, because I don't think we have enough time. But I'm gonna try. You know, damn it, I'm gonna try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I'm gonna try. Okay, last thing we're making tonight is guacamole. I need another bowl. Get this out of the way. Man, it's been an hour. This is, this is in, in, insane. I'm not doing five dishes again. That was, that was dumb. That was really dumb. Next time I'm doing a steak, it's gonna take 15 minutes and we're done. I just gave you pate. No, you eat the pate. Okay. Stir. Guacamole. Easiest thing ever. It's almost ready. 
it's getting close. It's got like five minutes. Okay. So my guacamole recipe is very simple. Only a few ingredients. Here's what we got. Cilantro, optional because it tastes like soap to some people. Serrano chili, I'm gonna leave, for me, I'm gonna leave in the seeds and jism and all that stuff. For me, I'm not using the whole pepper, that would be insane. Um, some people, like my wife and mom, have accused me of making guacamole that's too spicy. Well, I don't agree. Let's just agree to disagree. Anyway, we have a Roma tomato, which has a good ratio of tomato skin to tomato insides. Uh, white onion. We don't want any of them yellow onions or red onions for this. We want white onion. Red onion might actually be okay too. Uh, a little bit of lime for the juice to keep it from browning. And of course, Mr. Avocado. Haas avocado, not any of the other types of avocados. And I think I've mentioned this before. Avocado literally means testicle in ancient Aztec, the language. Okay. We're making a single size portion, which is gonna be a little tough because of how little ingredients we're using. So half of a tomato, like so small, so small, which I am going to um, kind of dice the wrong way because uh, I'm lazy tonight and maybe I've been drinking a little bit and that's okay. Um, but yeah, we're gonna dice this kinda into little dicey pieces. I think the other part I'll put on a salad um, because I am gonna have a little bit of a salad, a simple salad. I call it a simple salad. It's just butter, lettuce, tomato, and onion. Drowning in blue cheese. Okay, so we got a little bit of tomato, a little bit of tomato, real easy. All right, let's get the serrano in here. Now the serrano for a single size portion, I'm gonna use like three quarters of an inch. Yish. And I'm gonna mince it. Little tiny bits, little bits. If you've noticed, I say little bits a lot every time I say little bits because that's a thing. And if you know what that thing means, leave it in the comments. Also, if you're on YouTube, you didn't make it this far, um, but if you are on YouTube, uh, like and subscribe and all that shit and maybe the algorithm will expose my videos to more people than zero because when it exposes them to zero, nobody watches your shit. And then you're kind of stuck in this perpetual nobody watching your shit thing. Okay, here we go. A little bit of the Serranos in there. That'll give it a little heat. Okay, uh, onion, white onion. Let's uh, let's do that. Now, um, again, super small batch of guacamole. Ooh, I gotta check this. A little bit more. So close. So close with the jalapeno peppers. So close. Okay, so um, ever since I discovered how to make good pollo asada, I've been making a two-person sized uh, portion, which requires one quarter of one white onion. So for my single person one, we're looking at like one eighth of one white onion, which is, God, this is so small. The problem with guacamole is you can't really make it, you know, for later. So it turns brown. I don't care about the, oh yeah, add citrus, like some, some lime juice and uh, put it in the fridge. Like, no, it will, it will stay less brown for longer, but it will still turn brown, which we don't want to do. Okay, guac, you gotta make it eat fresh. Ooh, something is sizzling in the onion, or in the oven. Okay, anyway, got the white onions going here. Let's mince these fuckers up, because nobody likes to take a bite of white onion. It tastes like fucking onion. All right, something's seriously going down in here. This might be done. Those, those poppers might be done. Just throw this pan in the thing. Shit, my charcuterie board is in the way. I have so much stuff. It's gonna be a smorgasbord. Greatest word ever. Look up the actual meaning of smorgasbord and think about it. It's a great way to experience food. It doesn't mean stuff your fucking face and, and like, you know, eat as much as you can. That is not what a smorgasbord is about. It's not what a buffet is about either. FYI, and they're different. Okay, these poppers are done. Let me just show you these real quick before my hand burns. You see that? See them jalapeno poppers? Woo! That's bacon grease. All right, I'll give you some close-ups of all the goodies once we plate it up and 
eat it. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, I can turn off the oven now. God, it looks good. I'm super stoked. All right, back to finishing this up. Let's get the charcuterie out the way again. Don't need to be in the way. Whoa. Uh, wise adage, proverb. I don't know what that. Whatever they call it. A falling knife has no handle. Think about it. Okay. Basically, it means if you drop your knife, just let it go. Now, years ago, I used to use one of those things where you like bang on it and then it like, you know, minces the shit out of whatever's under it. But this is just so much easier with a knife, like for real. So much easier. <laughs> okay. All right, I got this uh, all minced up. Onions in there. All right, so far we got onions, tomatoes, and um, serranos. Uh, a little bit of cilantro. Fun, uh, fun thing about cilantro. Uh, cilantro hold the bunch upside down and then cut the uh, the bits off that way it's way easier that's that's what you want to do uh, we don't want too much give that a little bit of a of that we don't need to cut it up into little tiny tiny bits either little bits um, because it's a leaf it will get mashed up as we mash things up okay that's done now we need the avocado and I'm assuming everybody knows how to properly cut an avocado in half. Look at this. Oh, what's that? What? You just move it on the knife like that and you're done. What? You twist. Twist and wow, how did this get fucked up? How did this at all get fucked up while I'm on camera? Oh, this avocado was messed up. Wow. Okay. That's weird. Really weird. Um, okay. Um, okay. Well, normally it just kind of like slices in half. This is really weird. Oh, because this the pit on this avocado is really fucked up. God damn it. Horrible avocado. Like everything's stuck to the pit. Wow. This is horrible. Okay, anyway, let's cut that up into little pieces and um, throw it into a bowl. Alright. Okay. Cut that up, get that in there. This avocado got destroyed because of the pit. It was like solid attached to everything, which we don't want. Okay, avocado's in the bowl. Last thing we have is a little bit of lime. So for a two person portion, I would use the juice of half a lime. So I'm gonna use like part of the juice of half a lime. That's enough. And let me just rinse my hands off here real quick because it's covered in stuff. Okay, last thing to do is to add a little bit of salt, like a little bit. And the reason it's only a little bit is because typically when you eat guacamole, you're gonna be like dipping something in there, like, I don't know, chips. So when you dip uh, chips into the guacamole, the chips themselves are already salted. So you don't need to go, go crazy with the salt. I'm using a fork here to kind of mash up the little avocado bits and uh, kind of mix it up. Now this is not going to be super awesome because that pit really fucked up the avocado meat, as it were. But it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Give that a good, good mixing. Okay. Let me put this back in El Refrigerator. And uh, let's plate it up. Let's plate it up. We're, we're ready to go. We're done. We're done. We've cooked everything. There's nothing left to cook. Okay. So, first things first. We got a plate. Let's try one of these these uh, jalapeno bacon cheese scripts. Now, you notice it just, it, it just super came off easy. And that was because I've let it cool, which is critical. All right, so let's show you what we're looking, what we're working with here. See that? That is delicious, first of all. Second of all, what it really is, is again, Parmesan cheese and some other kind of cheddar and bacon and jalapeno and a little pepper. Mm. Awesome. That's fucking great. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I have a dozen of those now. Mm. They're like chips, but like good. Well, not that chips are not good. 
Mm. Just without the carbohydrate bullshit. Okay. What else we got? I'll pay you poppers. Let's check this shit out. I'm gonna grab one. These are still hot. I need a little bit of a help there. All right. So here's what we got going on with these guys. They look a little different. Yeah. It's a, it's a jalapeno wrapped in bacon with a cheese filling. I gotta give this a bite. Mmm, super hot. Wow. Oh my God. Mind blowing. Fucking mind blowing. I love these things. You gotta make this. It was uh, for, the, for this size, which is a half order, half order. This isn't even a full thing, a half thing. Mm. Wow, damn, I'm fucking hot. Okay. Cream cheese, pepper jack, bacon, and a jalapeno. And these are cool. Woo! Oh, hot as fuck. Mm, okay. Here's the charcuterie. You've seen this. I mean, it's just sliced up shit on a board. These little bamboo boards are great, and they're cheap, and they're on Amazon. Check it out. Links in the description. Actually, no, I don't have links in the description. I don't have an affiliate account set up with Amazon. And there's a reason for that. And I'm not gonna go into it right now, but I'm, I am gonna finish this jalapeno popper. My God, that's delicious. I should make those more often. Like, no bullshit, man. That's good. All right, guacamole. This is maybe the most underwhelming of all these things because it's, it's a dip. <laughs> I made a dip, but I'm not gonna eat it like a dip. I'm gonna eat it like an entree. Or a side dish or whatever. Whatever. I'll show you what this looks like. It's not very exciting. It's um green stuff with some red stuff in it. Mmm. Delicious. Guac. You know, to keep our carbs down, we're just gonna eat it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is a solid guacamole. Telling you, the biggest challenge here for the guac, making such a small portion. Again, half a Romano, an eighth of a white onion, three quarters of an inch or maybe half an inch of a Serrano, including the peppers, the seeds, and the uh, the jism, because it's all good for this. That was a pain. Ah, but that was good. All right. Last but not least, let's take a look at that other dish we made with the chicken livers. Pat hey. All right, everybody got their pinky up. Pinky's up. Did you know, fun fact, the monarchs in the UK, their etiquette dictates that they are not to drink with their pinkies up. That is like, that is, a, that is not a thing that they do. Mm. So there are people trying to be fancy. Okay, this is gonna be extremely hard to show because it didn't set up. And it's okay that it didn't set up because we don't need it to set up for today. But uh, it just looks like brown shit. It looks like someone diarrhea into my Tupperware. Um, but what it is actually is a delicious pate covered in clarified butter. So uh, I'm just gonna have some of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's call this really rich. Uh, and that's what that really means is it's, it's just mm, covered in fat. Cause it is, that's what it is. Mm, it actually needs a little bit of salt. I'm gonna do that. What salt should we use? I don't know. How about this one? Sea salt, sounds good. Sea salt. Try it again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. That's right. That's fantastic. I'm actually gonna throw that back in the fridge and let it um, harden up a bit. Let the clarified butter that's on top turn into a solid instead of a liquid. Do a phase change. And uh, when that happens, it's going to be a nice, spreadable, delicious thing that I can spread onto a spoon and put into my mouth, which I'm very much looking forward to. I'm going to tell you that. I'll tell you that much right now. Oh my God. So just to be honest, I've made that pate, I don't know, three or four times. It's 
good. It's been good every time. Um, this, however, is the first time I flambéed the Gondad brandy. That was that was change number one, and also uh, change number two. Um, I really got the sage in there with the saute with the chicken livers, and I didn't overcook them. I was cautious about that. And the flavor, like it's, and the texture, it's uh, it's got a softer texture. It's not at all grainy. It, it, generally, it was a little grainy before, mm. but this time around, it's silky. It's different. It's silky, and uh, the sage. Like the, the aftertaste from this pate, it's, uh, well, that sage is there and it's subtle. It's so good. It's so good. Okay, well, um, thanks for tuning in. I am going to actually get to the eating part of eating dinner. Thank you for watching me cook myself dinner. Let me get some of these chips going here. Cheese crisps. There we go. You really got to get these silly pats or uh, stuff sticks. Like, so I did this on tinfoil once and um, uh, without the bacon and jalapeno, just cheese, because it's a common thing. It was horrible because it's stuck and you would eat little bits of, little bits of aluminum eh, and uh, that just tasted like shit and nobody likes that. So uh, don't do that. Get some jalapenos on here. This is literally my only meal for the day. Believe it or not. Oh yeah, some jalapenos and bacon and cheese. Lucky for me, my, uh, my gastrointestinal system enjoys cheese. Okay, well here we go. I hope you enjoyed the new funky music, um, which is, I'm gonna say something different from last time. I've got a whole slew of new royalty free music that YouTube won't uh, fuck with me on. Uh, for future episodes. So stay tuned next week when we cook something else. But here we go. That's my dinner. Look at that. I have all the food groups. I have the cheese food group. I have the avocado based food group. I have the jalapenos with bacon and more cheese based food group. And then when that pate sets up, I've got pate and maybe that's a dessert or maybe I have ice cream also, which is uh, in the freezer and that could be a dessert. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.